Hello, and today we're going to be talking about CSS positioning. Now, we're specifically going to be talking about the, the CSS position property, not floats, not anything like that. But we're going to be talking about the two common values for the position attribute in CSS, which are absolute and relative. And as one suggests, they're, they're both kind of relative to each other and jive with each other. So that's what we're going to talk about today and um, kind of how they work. Let's get started. Um, we're going to first look at our example. So we've got a pretty simple page here. We've got a page wrap with uh, some title text. Um, relative uh, sort of positioning properties. As it says here, in this tutorial we'll go over some uh, relative and absolute positioning and talk about different interesting behaviours because they each have their own behaviours of course as anything does in web design and kind of you need to master them. So the example we're going to um, look at today is, is getting the, um, the, the search the, the search form or the form this element here to to actually display in the um, top end of our screen like you'd have with a common search form but what we wanted to do is we wanted to respect our um, we needed to respect our moving of the page. So, um, let's kind of take a look at the methodology behind this example, look at some of the code and then talk through it and do it. Um, what I'm going to do is just pop open the code in TextMate here. And if we minimise out of Firefox, we see we've got some pretty simple code. Standard header section. We've got a wrapper, which is what's allowing us to centre. We've got an H1 title. We've got that paragraph text. We've got some more paragraph text, just for show. And then we've got this form. It doesn't really matter where this form goes, so it doesn't have an accent out. Actually, but it's just a demonstration of something you might want to do. We've got a input on a button. Again, it doesn't really matter what they're for. It's just for demonstration purposes. So if we look in the CSS file real quick, just so you can see kind of where we're starting off from, we've got a reset to reset the margin and padding. We've got a clear class configured we've just got a standard font declaration and standard line height we've got some styling for the h1 tag we've got some margin for the paragraph elements uh, the next thing is something we're gonna have to kind of take into account when we get into the um think because um for, to be valid inputs in html text inputs buttons that kind of thing have to be wrapped in an html element which is block level element um so text may wrap some paragraphs tags so i just stuck with that uh, and but um, when we need to set it to display in line so that they're next to each other, if if we set it to display block that each be on their own line, so that is something to take into consideration. We have now got some styling for the wrapper div, which wraps all our content. It's 900 pixels 
and it's got a margin of 20 pixels and then auto margin on the left and right. So we're going to be overriding some of that styling. Let's first look at the uh, syntax for regular old absolute positioning. So we want to do it to the whole form because we want to get the whole form in the upper right of the screen. So we're going to say position absolute and then we're going to give it some pixel values in the form of other attributes say what we want it to do so how far from the top we want it well we'll just estimate so far this is the downfall of absolute position we'll say we want it Uh, twenty five pixels from the top, just to stay consistent. And for the moment, we'll just say we want it zero pixels from the right. So that's how you do absolute positioning. Let's save that and go back to our browser and see what it wielded us. Well, not too bad, but we can we can see it doesn't respect um, our minimizing, maximizing wrapper. It just stays glued to the <coughs> side of the window. Now, <coughs> this isn't very good. Or very, very appropriate for um, differences in screen resolutions. Because look at it, we've got some scroll, and it it's just not very um, considerate to the situation in different screen resolutions. So, how do we make it respect and um, still have the same positioning but stay inside our wrapper? Well. This is where the position relative command comes in. What you do is you apply position relative onto the parent element, and then what what that does is um tell tell our browser, okay, we don't want any absolute elements to go outside of this element, so it makes it a whole ton more useful. So let's look at what the uh, immediate parent is of the form it's not the only thing it's wrapped in is the wrapper so therefore we're going to make the wrapper position relative and then you'll see what happens i'm going to start i'm going to start a new select there because we specifically want to override something in accordance with our specific purpose here, so I'm going to say repo. It's, it's 19, 19 hours. hours. Position. Relative and when we go back to our browser, refresh. Refresh. We see that in our respects our wrapper we don't get any scroll and it it scrolls with our wrapper. So it's a good thing. It's a way to make absolute positioning e useful so the summary of the summary of this tutorial or things to take away from this tutorial um you can 
apply absolute positioning on any element and make it stay in a set given place on the screen if you want it to respect another element's positioning so to stay in the flow of the page you have to apply position relative to that element i hope you found this useful and yes yeah, see you in the next video guys